Today we are going to be looking at understanding the purpose and benefits of networking devices. You need to also learn about the different characteristics of LAN and WAN and most of this is probably going to be a recap of what you know from IDCSE. Eventually this will get into some heavy duty topics like subnetting and IPv4 and IPv6 in due course but at the moment the initial beginnings are just to look at why we need to do networking and what are the different types of networks we can create before we move on to things like topologies and the rest. So let's begin. Okay, so why did we want to network devices in the first place? So think about computers back in the 60s. They used to be standalone, they used to be a bit lonely, they only used to do things that their user wanted them to do and all the information that was stored on there was just on that one PC. If you wanted to recreate the results, you had to put the inputs all over again on another PC and chances are you'll get the same output. So there was a lot of duplication of work going on all over the place. It's in this type of a context that the term networking was born. People wanted to collaborate and share data and chances are that in the 60s you didn't actually have PCs but you had these big bulky computers which were part of big organizations like defense institutes and universities and all of them wanted to share the work that they were doing. This is the reason for the rise of the ARPANET. No, it's not like Skynet. Uh, that's just from the Terminator movies. So don't expect autonomous, robotic or artificially intelligent computers. That's not what this is all about. It was just a group of people who wanted to connect computers together. And that was the reason for the first network to be created back in the United States. There is a big political twist here as well. And think about this, back in the 60s, the Cold War was at its peak, United States versus the Soviet Union, and ARPANET began small. So in 1969, there were a few computers on the west coast of the United States. Then it moved across to its first cross-American link between the east coast and the west coast and then a lot of universities around each coast started linking up and by 1972 there, there were quite a few across america and by 1977 it became quite a big network yet the public still didn't have any access to it it was all the domain of defense institutes and universities the rise of the advanced research projects agency network or arpanet for short was an early form of packet switching wide area network connecting a number of large computers in the US Department of Defense. Now it later expanded to include university computers as well. However, think, you know, going back to that Cold War scenario that R Russia had just launched the Sputnik satellite and obviously the United States was worried and it wanted to make sure that data was shared and there was a backup just in case you know there were nuclear missiles being launched at a particular defense institute and that's basically the premise behind the need for networking and like all technologies all great things start off due to the fear of war or due to war itself and eventually this ARPANET evolved into the internet that we know today. However if you read the quote of the ARPA director at that time that it's quite clear that people were getting frustrated certainly at university levels of not being able to share uh, information across uh, different campuses and different universities and that was also a key factor behind the development and the take up of this technology at university level and then we flash forward to the 80s when personal computers developed rapidly local networks began to appear. Now back in the 60s and 70s, the computers used to be very large. So you needed to have a lot of clients to access these computers and networking's purpose was to kind of create these clients who can connect to these big mainframe computers at universities without actually having to travel there and they could access and run their programs. But in the 80s, the PC revolution happened, personal computers were in people's homes and local networks were created. These then became known as local area networks and that's where the big move towards the internet actually happened. Now LANs tended to be a lot more smaller than wide area networks. Normally inside one or two buildings 
and the idea was that you connect computers and share devices like printers. Often this used to be very private and it could be a part of a van so you could have a lot of local area networks all connecting together to have a wide area network that was also the possibility but this is the typical land that you see in organizations such as schools and offices the key thing you need to remember is that lands have a small geographical area and that is pretty critical and um, important distinction between the wide area network now to create a LAN you need to have a number of devices that end up talking to each other and a PC on its own it's very difficult to kind of create a LAN so a number of PCs could be connected via a switch or a hub. Now a switch is a device for connecting computers and other network capable devices like printers even things like routers and servers and it's pretty intelligent. The hub does the same thing. It connects all these devices together, but the distinction between a switch and a hub is that switch is intelligent, so it knows where to send the data. Any data packet that comes to the switch, it inspects it, it reads the destination address, and then it sends it to the destination because the switch keeps a table of or a record of all of the devices that are connected to it. A hub isn't as intelligent, so it just sends the data out to every device that is connected to it and that's not very secure. Of course then you had devices like the router which allowed you to connect different even different networks together and then obviously there is the modem a modulator and demodulator and we're going to be looking at all of these devices in a bit more depth later on as well. So all you need to know for now is that router is a device for connecting computers and other network capable devices together. It allows you to form a network and it also allows you to connect to other networks. A modem is simply a hardware device that converts data from a digital format to a format suitable for use over a telephone wire. Of course, as technology evolved, we had the ability to create wireless local area networks, which are similar to LANs, but there are no wires and cables. So a LAN would probably require an Ethernet cable to connect devices together, a wireless local area network doesn't so no wires no cables however due to the limitations of wireless technology it's only effective up to distances of a hundred meters so very short distances whereas a LAN depended on the length of the cable now these uh, wireless access points or routers use radio waves which go up to 100 meters or infrared signals which are about one to two meters you need to know that the technology key technology or key hardware that we use is the wireless access point and again we'll look at this in a bit more depth later on in, in the series of lessons. So let's move on to the wide area network or WAN. These can consist of N systems or intermediate systems and the difference is that an N system does not connect to any other system so it could be the end point of a wide area network. So for example a school LAN which doesn't connect to another LAN. Whereas there will be systems which are called intermediate systems which connect to a lot of these end systems. So think about a city by network in Beijing for example. Uh, you might have the city district in the middle would be an intermediate network and then you've got a Shaoyang or out even further outskirts which might be the end systems that are connected to, to the city because they lie on the outskirts. So that kind of approach works for wide area networks. Now that's the end of this particular segment. For now, you should know the difference between a LAN and a WAN. You need to know the difference between a switch and a hub and what's the difference between a modem and a router. So as long as you know those differences, you are pretty much okay to tackle the next lesson, which is the client server and peer-to-peer -peer network models.